This is Jeff from Rockridge Four Wheel Drive. I want to go over the JL and JT Rubicon locker diffs because I'm super frustrated with the posts about these um, Jeeps being re-geared and it being the mechanic's fault. And yes, it is likely that um, they will, these sensors will fail after a re-gear and I'll show you why. And it's not really a fault of the installer, it's just the nature of this design and how you disrupt it during the process of regearing. So here we go. This is how it looks when it's inside your diff. You take the cover off and this is what you can see. You can see the sensor. And you can also see that there is oil inside that sensor. Not only that, but there is oil inside this plug. There is oil inside this plug. There's also oil on the other side of the, uh, this plugs into the housing, and then on the outside of the housing there's a plug and there's oil inside that one. Um, the oil itself is not a problem, however, this oil is contaminated with a whole bunch of small metal particles. Now, let's talk about if this can be done wrong or not. Um, and I'm talking about how this thing is assembled during a re-gear. Now take Take note also, here, put that back on. Take note that once you take it out of the vehicle and you set it on your shop bench, you have now put the locker onto its side. And this sensor is now facing down, which means it is full of oil. And that is what I mean by the process of doing this job is going to disrupt that sensor. Um, it's already full of oil, but what I'm saying is you're basically shaking the oil around inside of the sensor and, you know, if there's a chance for it to fail and it hasn't failed yet, it will now. So take this back off. Let's flip it over. We can see the oil now is draining down into the bottom. Let me show you the metal particles. This is a little magnet here. You can see there's already metal particles on this magnet. And this is a locker position sensor, so when the locker locks and unlocks, it moves. And the sensor tells it whether, um, you know, what position it's in, if it's locked or unlocked. Now, the other night I was on Facebook, and there was a debate that the installer assembled it wrong. It's pretty much not something that you can do. There is one thing that you can screw up a little bit, and that's about it. So you take it off, right? You take it off the thing, and um, these are where the little tangs for the little armature plate, this, this guy here, pull that out of there. This is a perfectly symmetrical piece. As far as I know, this cannot go wrong. It, it can't go any other way wrong. I mean, you can't put this wrong that way because it, obviously it's going to hit the magnet. Um, it has to go down. There's only one way to do it. And you simply take these teeth, line them up right there. That's it. Engaged. Now, Now, the only thing that can really be messed up here is sliding this in. When you slide it into this retainer here, there's this little lip right here. This piece has to be over the top of that. I don't know if you can see it, but that is how it goes. It's almost like a little, a little retainer just to hold it while you're sticking it back on here. Now this piece can only go one way because obviously the little sensor, the little magnet is sliding down into the sensor. And there's also a tab right here where a groove is right here, so it can only go right there. Okay, that sits down. The whole thing flips over and it goes down on top of the locker. Um, literally, I think this is like the only thing that can be screwed up because it is possible to slide 
Tyler, Tyler slide that underneath. You can slide it in and have that plate go underneath that. Um, it, it would bend this a little bit, but it can happen. And that's basically the only thing that can be screwed up. Everything else is can go only one way. So anyhow, the best thing to do is to slide this on there, slide this piece on next, and then of course your your uh, magnet goes on it, and then sorry, we're amateurs at making videos here. I'm just trying to make this make sense to everybody so that. Um, you know, shops aren't getting blamed for something that uh, is just a failure. You have to lift that up. It's a, it's a design failure. Okay. Make sure it goes underneath that. Those tabs get locked down in. And this can only go one way. Like I said, the only thing that can be messed up is if this plate is underneath that tab, or the other way I was showing you was on top, but in this case it's underneath. And then put this back on. Now this can only go one way as well because lift that up again so I can show them. See how there's that little little notch right there and this little uh, tab and then of course the sensor the magnet goes down into the sensor so it literally can go only one way and then your bearing gets pressed on. But again, back to the disrupting the sensor and flipping it over and all that, it, there's no way around that. You have to do that to do this job. Um, you pull it out, you set it on your bench, you pull off your bearing, you pull all this crap off, you flip it over, you have to pull off your rain gear bolts, you have to take your rain gear off, you have to lift it back up, Put the new rain gear back on after everything's cleaned and you flat file and all that whatnot. Okay, then you have to flip it back over again, put the rain gear bolts back in and torque them. And so you're constantly flipping this thing back and forth and back and forth. And you are simply just, this magnet's getting, you know, shaken up. Um, even if you took this off and it only got turned onto its side one single time out of this whole process, it doesn't matter. You have just moved the whole oil around and you have got all that metal particles just sloshed around inside there. But it's causing, you know, it's grounding out in there on the little board. It's grounding out in here. It's grounding here because of all those little metal particles. So if you were a shop and you were going to re-gear a JL or JT Rubicon, you need to just inform your customer that if their light's not on, it very likely will be on when you're finished. Plain and simple. Um, and if it's not right away, great. But it's going to come on at some point. Um, I guess I shouldn't say 100% of the time, but it might as well be 100% of the time because it's not if, it's when. And um, people can say whatever they want, but it's just a fact. So we tell our customers about this. I'm making this video specifically to show the customer how it cannot be avoided. And I want uh, people to understand what is wrong with this setup. It's This is a design flaw in this part right here. It just is not sealed. I mean, yeah, people are uh, drilling them and potting them and doing stuff like that, which is fine. Do whatever you want to remedy it. I think it's cool just to buy the Z Auto harnesses and uh, call it a day and move on with your life. Or you can go waste a whole bunch of time at the dealer, have them do it. Um, you may get your Jeep back in a couple days, it may take a couple months, everything may be back ordered, who knows. It's gonna fail again. It's just going to. So until they have a new design for this part, I think everyone is just wasting their time, but that's my opinion. Take it for what it's worth. Jeff from Rockridge, 4 drive.com.